I thought I'd continue on and this might end up being just a little bit different video. Tomorrow is the first day of spring and we're getting some jobs done. So I thought I'd continue on and show you some more of what I've been doing. And I know that most of your interest is in the sheep. So I thought I would focus on that a little bit more. You saw a little bit in my yard a minute ago. This is the bottom of our old barn. I've shown you it a couple times, I know. And I just thought I'd talk about this because it might be interesting to you. I've talked to you before about, you know, saving any gates that you have because you can reuse them, just reusing spaces. And this is coming in underneath of the old barn. I'm going to pan up a little bit. This is the floor of the hay mow up above. See where there's actually a board missing, so it's been replaced. And there's some of last year's swallow nests. And there's a tie stall there on the left where the orange gate is. Straight ahead is a big, long box stall. And then box stalls on either side. One there. One there. And then this alleyway, Bill used to put horses in cross ties to get ready for harnessing. But anyway, what I'm going to do today, and I'll, I'll try to film some of it. I don't know. I'll have to set the camera on a tripod, and I'm not sure how that would work. But when I bring the sheep in this afternoon, I'll run them underneath here. And let me back up again. So, excuse the glare for a minute. They'll come in this door here. I'll put gates across so that they don't go into their normal pen. And they'll follow me pretty well anyway. So they'll come in and come underneath here. I'll have grain in the back. And especially now that I only have 12. And then you can see this gate right here. I've got it hinged over on the side. And there's the prerequisite binder twine. I'll swing that shut behind them. And it'll latch over here or tie over here. Got a little bit of chaff on the floor. And they'll be squeezed in here pretty tight that for with 12 sheep. But that's what I want. I'm going to be working by myself. And I'm going to be changing some coats. And so that's a little tip for you. If you want to do something with sheep, if you can get them all penned up tight together, and as long as you can squeeze in between them, you can handle them a little bit without having to either tie them up or have you know somebody else holding them it still will be a little bit hard because it's sometimes hard to get the coats off by yourself I mean I'm pretty good at handling sheep I know where to put my knee and where to put my arm but it can be hard one-handed so I just thought you might like to see that that isn't what this space was intended for or that gate that's one of our lambing pen gates but that's how I make it work and this is from days past. Still some old bridles hanging here. Hoof nippers for a horse. And the shoes. A bridle would have hung there. And this old peg that is actually made from iron wood out of the barn. So that's what I'm going to be doing for sheep care later today. I told you I was going to try to do this, oh, a week or so ago, but then weather wasn't just exactly right and I didn't have time. So that's going to be the next step in our year towards growing a yarn. I've got some sheep coats that need to be changed size-wise, and that'll give me a chance to look at the fleece, and maybe I can even get some pictures of some of that. We'll see. Oh, and because I'm just sure that you all are dying to know about the hay situation. <laughs> the latest bale of hay, one of our last three. Thank the good Lord, this one is beautiful. It was some third cutting. It's soft. It's full of leaves. And the timing couldn't be better as the ewes get closer towards lambing and need a little bit better feed. Grass hasn't come on yet. So... That's the latest hay update for you. Oh, I'm back again. It's afternoon. I'm going to bring the sheep in a little bit early. So I've got uh, gates up so that they can't go down to their usual place where they go in. They'll run in and come along here. 
got the alleyway bought and ready for them to come in here. So wish me luck. And I'm going to also try to get some pictures of some fleeces for you. Fingers crossed, right? Now you can see that they're all squeezed in here. Not a lot of room to move, except for Francie. I may have to get another tie here that's a little wobbly, but I just wanted to s you to see how tight they are in there. Room to move around, room for me to move around, but I should easily be able to hold one up against a gate and change a coat, in theory. And Francie will just be hanging out. Because it's no trouble to catch her and change her coat if she needs it. Okay? I'm going to get on the job. Okay, so I want to tell you a couple of things that happen. I've go, got the coats off the three that were tight that needed to come off. And not because the coats were actually small for their body, they just had so much fleece in there. A couple of the ewes that look like their coats were too small to go around their bellies actually have plenty of room, no crowding in their legs, anything like that. But now here's the problem. Those three that I just took the coats off of, the next size up in coat size is quite a bit too big for them. So I got to think about what I'm going to do. And I have one other problem. This is the white fin sheep. I'm going to try to get a close-up picture, but they're all going to be wiggling around. Let me see if I can get in there and show you. I'm going to pause for just a minute. That's the ram lamb there. And now that a couple of ewes have their coats off, he thinks it's a whole new sheep. <laughs> Boys. Okay. Hi, Hannah. Doing this alone and one-handed <laughs> isn't really working, is it? But I was did start to talk to you about the fin sheep. Her coat was okay size-wise, but I'd noticed her itching a lot. And I don't know if you can see... She has dander, super, super bad. We're a month off from shearing, two months from shearing. My inclination is to leave the coat off of her, let her get good air to her coat, to her skin. Look at those curls. But it's wet and muddy and we're still feeding hay. What would you say, Hannah? What do you think we should do? Hmm? Here's a coat that I just took the little pom-pom out of, so she's got enough room. So, any fin sheep breeders out there that coat their sheep that have any suggestions? Let me try to sneak up on Pete again. Look at that. shadow. There, that's probably showing the silver pretty good. Is there going to be anybody interested in a beautiful Cordell silver gray lamb fleece? The other one that I uncovered was Naomi. And hers is going to be too dark to probably show you the crimp. But you can see the length, maybe. And look at how, even with the coat on, how the tips are bleached. Well, these guys are pretty crowded in here. I better get these coats back on. There's the ewe lamb penny. The coat's changed. I did decide to leave the coat off of the fin ewe for right now. Think about what I might want to do with that. Marjorie's coat, see it looks small for her, partly because she's so long bodied. It's not tight around her neck or her legs. The 
only other thing I could do is maybe put a big coat on her and put the poof in the back. So there, and there's Petoskey, isn't he handsome? His is a little tight in the front just because of the wool. He's got plenty of room, you know, I slide my fingers in there and around his legs. But he's got quite a mass of wool around his front. So, but it's looser than the last one. Boy, he's a nice guy. So I'm going to get these guys out of here.